Hi everyone, today I'm talking about why INFJs hide their true selves from the world. Now, the first big reason is a somewhat surprising reason. It's because most INFJs are cut off from their own intuition. That might sound really weird because INFJs have this big reputation, especially online, for being really, really intuitive, right? If not the most intuitive type. That's what we always hear about INFJs. INFJs are highly intuitive. They can see behind the masks. They can see what's going on. They know when someone's lying, right? So that sounds odd. Like why would we be cut off from our intuition then? So the thing is INFJs are naturally intuitive. And yes, they are a very intuitive type, if not one of the most intuitive types. However, usually from a young age, INFJs are conditioned to shut down their own intuition. This is usually because other people around the INFJ find their intuition threatening. Um, usually INFJs at a young age will see things going on in their family and point those things out and other family members don't appreciate that or, or are even scared of that. So they will very quickly punish the INFJ child or let them know that's not okay, they'll shame them. And this conditions the INFJ child to shut down their intuition. As the INFJ grows up and grows older, we might try to share our intuitions with other people and we also get a negative reaction. People might say, that's really weird, you're being judgmental, especially when we have intuitions about negative things like, I don't think that relationship's going to work out. I don't think that's a good choice for you for a job. I don't see this going well in the future, right? The way we can see patterns and how they are going to unfold. If that contains any negativity for other people and we share that with them, a lot of times people will say, you're really being judgmental. I can't believe you would say that. I don't know why you're thinking that because they can't see the pattern the way we can see the pattern. So this distance, uh, distances us from our own intuition. And then we start shutting down our intuition on our own as a safety mechanism. Now, when this happens, we start to hide our true selves from the world because our true self is very intuitive. That's a core element of the INFJ personality type is being so intuitive. So when we cut ourselves off from our own intuition, we start hiding that part of ourselves from the world. The other factor that comes into play is that INFJs usually do not feel seen by other people. It is oftentimes very hard for us to verbalize what's going on inside of us, usually because there's so much, it's so complex, it's so deep. We ourselves are having trouble piecing together the pattern. So it's really hard for us to verbalize what's actually happening within our inner landscape to other people. And if we grew up in a situation or a home where we didn't feel safe, we didn't feel like it was okay to be ourselves, to show our intuition, to show how we really are in the world, then we have adopted a mask and we usually use that mask when we are in front of other people. So this kind of plays off of each other where we're wearing the mask and um, we want to be seen, we want people to see the real us, but we're wearing this mask and so people can't see the real us and then we feel like they don't see the real us and we feel like the real us is not acceptable and so we mask even more. Usually, like I said, this um, masking of the true self is used as a protective mechanism from a very young age. So it can be really hard for an INFJ to break out of this cycle on their own. This leads to most INFJs living in a performative role for others. When I usually say that to my INFJ clients at first, they're like, performative role? What do you mean? I'm an introvert. I'm shy. I have social anxiety. I don't perform. I don't like to be on stage. I don't like public speaking. So it's not about being on stage or being a performer or trying to get all the attention for yourself in a room. It's not about trying to be in the spotlight or take that spotlight and hold it on yourself. Being in a performative role for others means that you are constantly and usually subconsciously performing to meet the expectations of others. INFJs are very good at this. We can walk into a room, we can form a relationship, we can go into a new workplace and really immediately see what's going on, what's the dynamic in the group, who has the power in the group, what's expected of us, what role do people want us to play, what are they looking for from us, and then we deliver that. We will do this in some of our more most intimate relationships. So even with a trusted partner or a best friend, we will still tend to be performative. 
If we have a best friend we really love and we really trust, we feel accepted by them, but we know that friend tends to need a lot of reassurance, they really need someone to agree with them a lot of the time, we will fall into that role without even thinking about it. So when we're around them, we become the very agreeable, very reassuring person that they need. Um, likewise, if we are in a workplace and we know that our manager really values neutrality and being logical and being a thinker over a feeler, we will become that in that role. Hey, I'm really neutral. I can look at this in a very logical way. I can leave my emotions at the door. So INFJs can be very fluid in that way where we do tend to perform based on the unspoken emotional expectations that other people have around us. This is not an altogether bad thing because it means that INFJs can move around in a lot of different levels in society, which we actually really like. We like to gather information on other humans and what they're doing. So that part is cool, uh, but it can also be very exhausting, especially if we are not getting the alone time we need because when we are alone, that's when we are dropping the performative role only usually when we are alone or with a trusted partner who we feel completely comfortable actually being our true self around, um, which some INFJs have that, some don't. But the alone time is very important because when we are alone, completely physically, energetically alone, and we feel like we're in a protected space, we can just be ourselves and we're not performing to meet anyone else's expectations. So these are a few of the reasons that INFJs hide their true selves from the world. The thing about hiding your true self from the world for an INFJ, even though it might feel safe and it might feel familiar and it might feel like you can stay in your comfort zone doing that, ultimately it's not going to be helpful and it's not going to be beneficial for INFJs because INFJs also have a very deep need for authenticity and transparency. And when we hide our true selves, our needs for authenticity and transparency are not being met. We feel like people don't see us. We really want people to see us. We really want to show up as our true selves in the world. So it's very important that you move towards that goal. If you are an INFJ and you're, you're watching this and you're like, oh yeah, I have the mask on definitely at work, my, in my friend group, no one really knows me, I feel very isolated. It is time to start thinking about dropping that mask and moving into the world as your true self. I'm launching a new online video course in just a few days, and it's dealing with all of these topics for INFJs. It's called Energy and Intuition for INFJs. It is going to be cram packed full of knowledge for INFJs in just about every area of life. Self, self-image, relationships, creativity, work and jobs, finding meaningful work in the world, finding your sole purpose. Um, it comes with workbooks, lots of journal prompts, exercises to get that INFJ brain going and to start really triggering some deep inner transformation. These shifts that so many INFJ people are looking for and just can't ever quite seem to make happen. This is because a lot of the material out there in the world, a lot of the personal growth stuff you'll find, it just doesn't work for INFJs. It's not geared towards us. It's not that there's anything bad or wrong about it, but we are really a different breed. We think in a different way. We operate in a different way. We just are fundamentally different. So a lot of the mainstream stuff out there really doesn't work for us. This course is specifically for the INFJ personality type. So if you've been watching these videos and you're saying, this is me, I definitely need this, Get your hands on this course. I'm going to be offering it for a deep discount for just five days. After that, the price is going to go up. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to contact me. There's a contact form on my website, laurensapala.com. You can email me, rightcitysf at gmail.com or lauren at laurensapala.com. Either email works. If you have any questions at all, please get a hold of me and let's get them answered before I launch the course so you can make a decision and you can get that deep discount if you do want it. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. And thank you so much, everyone, who's already sent me some really good questions. I'm always just so interested in the people who reach out and say, this moved me, this touched me, or I'm still struggling with this, or this is my big problem. So keep them coming if that's you. I would love to hear from you. I will see you all for the launch. Thank you so much.